Herbert Rogers, Kent the Cool Gent? Yeah. Uh, Herb Kent is somebody I grew up listening to here in Chicago when I was a teenager and I was and in college and high school, and I used to listen to Herb Kent. And when I took over these radio stations nine or ten years ago, Herb was at another radio station kind of brokering time in the wee small hours of the morning. And I called her, called Herb one day and asked him if he'd like to come back on mainline radio, and he said yes. And we brought him back on the AM to do a shift, and... It was just a phenomenal thing because an awful lot of people started uh, remembering when Herb was on before. One of my buddies I went to school with came back from the Army. We bunked together, and he was excited having his friend on the radio, and he said, why don't you call Ryan? Ryan? You know, everything, all blacks rhymed everything then, just like uh, Daddy-O did it, 92, O'Rue, or something like that, everybody. So he said, uh, man, what you do is cool. Why don't you call yourself cool, Jen? And he said, why don't you say, I was real sent by Herb Kent, the cool gen, and that's where it started, Herb Kent, the cool gen. I tried to get away from that name because I think it's data, but evidently people still like to hear that. And now, the electric crazy people for Rib Supreme. Manual, if you rub those two ribs together, they'll make a rib genie. Oh, Herb, I don't believe that. Do it. Look, it's a 15-foot tall genie. Wow. The Baraka Rebe. Hey, 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 hey Miss Rib Genie, get, give me a small order of Rib Supreme, will you? Dig, brother man, if you want it, I can cop. Saba Rock for Reba Do. Yay. Look, you actually got it. Yeah. I don't believe it. Oh, Miss Genie, I tell you what, give me two orders of ribs from Rib Supreme. Right on. Saba Rock for Reba Do. Yay. Hey, she did it. Yeah, you got it. Ain't that something, Herb? Yeah. I, 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 let, me, let me do one. I want 50, 50 big, big slabs. I want them right now. It is. Sabaraka Reba Do. Yeah. You got all them ribs. All 50 of them. Look here, Miss Rib Genie, I love ribs from Real Supreme. I tell you what, I want a whole train load of ribs from Real Supreme. Oh, wow. Sabaraka Reba Do. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. Look out. No. No, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's Rib Supreme 4900 West Madison. This is Barbecue Bobby saying these are the only ribs that are taste tested. It's just kind of nice to have a legend around because when you kind of get off kilter, you can kind of bring a Herbkin in and ask him, you know, where are we going? And he can give you some insights that are just not available from anyone else. He was a character that actually lived in, I never saw this one, but he did uh, live in Oak Hill Gardens. And he was some type of man who wore funky gym shoes, you know, like on a, he never changed them. And like on a hot summer day, days for weeks on end he wouldn't take his gym shoes off 105 degrees sweating and everything and then he'd wait for a beautiful lady to come walking down the street he would knock her down pull off his gym shoe and say sniff my sneaker <laughs> put it right on her face <laughs> now was I was that not demented <laughs> If you don't dig the blues, you got a hole in your soul. WVON 1450. Get you some soul. Rodney's got a pot on this morning. You dig it? That's 591-5990 if you wish to turn back the hands of time. Go, go, Herb Kent. Go, go, Herb Kent. The cool G. Go, go. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's to, yeah, he used to, uh, 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 do the dances at our school. Uh, I went to uh, Crane. Uh, the Wahoo Man and a lot of those characters, but the Wahoo Man is the one that stands out. I don't know if that concept would work in today's radio, but for its time, it was truly creative and innovative radio. Now, the Wahoo Man, again, was um, stuff that I did 
uh, I created from a, a real life experiences, that, which might have been why it was so uh, successful. I had this dance hall called the Times Square, and I left there with a guy named Nitro, who is now serving time for armed robbery in the penitentiary. But he used to work for me. He used to kind of, I used to kind of keep him straight, and a girl with very nice looking legs named Brenda. So we all, at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, went to Chili Max, which is on 47th in Michigan, and anybody in Chicago knows Chili Max. Even uh, the guy who used to sing with Count Basie was sent back for some chili from Chili Max. Uh, what's his name, Joe, uh, huh? Joe Williams, like that. So it's, it, it's still very famous. So uh, I just bought my first Cadillac, which was a year old, pre-owned car by um, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> there was a big dent in the dashboard where, where he probably got mad and smashed his hand down it. I could never get that dent out. But it was a cool car, and it had an alarm on it with a switch in it. So I got out of the car with Nitro and Brenda, and we walked, we're walking into uh, Chili Max, and these two girls, beautiful, beautiful girls, dressed to the nines, were running in panic down the street, not across the street or down the street, but diagonally in the street, you know, and they were just panicking, and it turned out that this old man was standing in the doorway with a little black dog, and this old man had a terrible face with running sores and stuff like that, an old hat and a long coat and a broomstick. And he lunged at these girls like, like that. And that would scare anybody. So they ran. So they got away. We went in and started eating chili. And this old man came in the door, left his dog outside. And he started leaning over everybody's table. And then he leaned over my table and his face actually was dripping in my chili. I said, man, you've got to get out of here. So he left and he went up to the to the cashier <laughs> and the cashier said old man get out of here and the old man said I'll kill you and whereupon he turned and left so we thought he was gone we, we walked out and the man was still there he was out there he was actually singing the blues and this little black dog was right by his side we got in the car and he came toward the car with that broomstick Now I only had this car for about a week and he was going to knock the hell out the car with the broomstick I turned the alarm on and went Whoa! Oh, oh. And he said, wahoo, wahoo, don't scare nobody. And he ran down the alley. So the guy who's now in the penitentiary was kind of creative said, hey, man, they call him the wahoo man. So from that point on, he was the wahoo man. And I recreated this on the radio. I had a fellow who was very talented play the part for me in the streets. This fellow, his name is uh, Stallworth, Robert Stallworth. He's now a doctor. He's a um, radiologist. And he worked his way through medical school doing this thing for me. We went down to a guy named Patrick Henry who's made masks for people in the movie, and we made a rubber mask for my memory of that man. And it had running sores and everything like that. And we'd lay him in a casket and take him around to schools and nightclubs. We took him to the uh, Capitol Theater one time, laid him down with lid closed, played an organ piece, box to cotton fugue, had a flag draped over it, and we had a, a uh, a pickle bottle full of uh, chitlins <laughs> laying on top it's supposed to be this man's entrails. Entrails, how do you pronounce that? Insides. So we play the music and the lid would slowly open and this black hand would come out like that. The lid would slowly open and by the time it got open, uh, Stallworth would slowly sit up in the casket. People were terrified, you know. Then he, put, he had gym shoes on, he put one leg over the casket and the police pulled their pistols. They said, Herb, we know you created him, but don't let him come close to us. They were going to shoot him. So he, he, he had the broomstick and everything, and he jumped out of the casket and ran down the aisle, and people were fainting, and people just parted like the, uh, like the Red Sea. We would do that in schools, nightclubs, and we would get away with it because we would plan the escape route, and no one would know which way he ran, and invariably people would run out of the way. So one time, uh, we did it at the Peppermint on the west side, and this lady, very beautiful lady, was trying to get out of the way, and she didn't get 